Johnson goes airborne for his league-leading 28th touchdown of the year. Ray Alexander scores. The Stamps up by nine in the fourth quarter. But the Calgary defense cannot complete the job. Chris Skinner puts the Eskimos back in front to stay with a 32-yard touchdown. The loss still leaves Calgary two games over 500, a record of 9-7. and seven. And while they have yet to clinch a playoff berth, that could happen tonight. The Montreal Alouettes, meanwhile, simply looked terrific last week when they were home to Saskatchewan. Second quarter, Brian Ransom hooks up with James Hood. Second in the CFL for receptions, a 32-yard major. The Riders' lead cut to seven points. And 16-year pro Zenon Andrew Sishin has a field day kicking field goals. Completing a five-for-five five night, this 45-yarder provided the winning margin in a narrow one-point win. The Alouette's third win at home this year over Western opposition. And tonight, it's the Calgary Stampeders who pay a call on the Montreal Alouettes. Live from Montreal's Olympic Stadium, CTV's Friday Night Football. These two clubs have only met one other time this year, way back in August at McMahon Stadium. And the Alouette's tough defense knocked out Rick Johnson, but Jeff Tedford rallied the Stampeders with this touchdown toss to Jamie Harris. 21-10 the final, the revival of football in Calgary well underway. But it has not been a great year for the Alouettes. Mind you, they've won two of their last three ball games. So this is an improving club already fighting for next year's jobs. Tonight, the Alouettes get another chance to impress the coaching staff while the Stampeders look to clinch a playoff berth. The weather is simply perfect tonight for football. A clear sky, 5 degrees Celsius. It's a little cool, just a breath of breeze. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to CTV's Friday Night Football. Explosive and productive adjectives used all year to describe the Calgary offense, but not Montreal's. But when we were here last week, we saw indications that maybe this is changing. The Alouette's quarterback, Brian Ransom, is certainly maturing. Sean Faulkner looks like a terrific running back, and James Hood provides that deep threat. If the Alouette offense has indeed come around and can match the capabilities of its tough defense, this team will be able to challenge any other in the CFL. For their comments, let's go upstairs. Pat Marsden with Leif Patterson. Thank you, Dan. Hello again, everybody. Leif, you know, last week, Montreal did the Stampeders a favor by beating the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Now, of course, the Stampeders have their own destiny. A victory here tonight, which is more than likely because they have just feasted on Eastern opposition all year. Pat, they played well all year. You know, if you could pick a team in the Canadian Football League in 1986 that you would like to watch, I'm sure the Calgary Stampeders would be at the top of the list because, as Dan Matheson told you, they're just so potent. There's Rick Johnson. He's thrown a lot of interceptions this year, but the touchdown production has been right up as well, and that's all you worry about. He's got some great receivers. Ray Alexander, Emmanuel Tolbert, both over 1,000 yards this year. And Gary Allen, how about him? He's the leading rusher in the Canadian Football League. He, too, over 1,000 yards. So, offensively, they're a truly exciting team. Yeah, and it's, you know, how many times you get a 1,000-yard rusher with receivers like Alexander and Tolbert who are over 1,000 yards in pass receiving, but they do have an Achilles heel. And a young fellow by the name of Faulkner from Montreal could have a good night here because the Stampeder... Uh, defense against the run has not been great. Well, it's not the best in the Canadian Football League. They've given up 4.9 yards per carry every time a team has carried the ball against them. So, Sean Faulkner could have a good night. Offensively, the Montreal Alouettes last week did run the ball well, so anything can happen. For his final comments, let's go back down to field level and Dan Matheson. Leif, you were talking about Alexander and Tolbert. They both play on the right side, and Rick Johnson completes almost three times as many passes to that side of the field as he does to the left. So it's Terry Irvin and Brian Dudley under the gun tonight. This is CTV's Friday Night Football.
Mesdames, Messieurs, veuillez maintenant vous lever, vous joindre à Mme Géraldine Doucet, accompagnée alors par Mme Diane Bibo pour le Nadim National Ladies and Gentlemen, please rise and join Mrs. Geraldine Doucet, accompanied at the organ by Mrs. Diane Bibo for our national anthem. Well, there won't be an awful lot of people here in the Big O tonight, but they could well miss a very important football game in the life of the Calgary Stampeders because as we take a look at Jacques DeCarry, who will be the referee for tonight's ball game, the Stampeders are on the verge of clinching a playoff spot. With a victory tonight, they will do so. And boy, what a year they have had against Eastern opposition. They have beaten Eastern teams six out of seven outings, and as a matter of fact, that's why they have been so successful in 1986. When you look at their Western Conference opposition, they've only won three games against the Western Division. But they all count two points, and that's what the Stampeders are looking for tonight as Zen and Andrew Sisson will line it up and kick it away for the Montreal Alouettes. The Alouettes have been impressive of late. Winners of two of their last three games, and they have beaten three Western teams here in the Big O. And Gary Allen gets it out over the 30 to about the 31-yard line. So that's where the Stampeders will put it into play offensively, and Gary Allen is a very big part of that offense when you consider that he has rushed for over 1,000 yards and is one of the key pass receivers in that scheme of things for the Stampeders. But here are the big guys. Well, of course, we talked about E.T., Emmanuel Tolver. He's the veteran in that receiving core. Marshall Toner, who missed the ball game last week against the Edmonton Eskimos, he's back in the lineup tonight. And don't lose sight of Tony Woodruff. He's a game-breaker as well. So Rick Johnson and the Stampeder offense starts from the 31, but they're not going to end up there because this is Allen really turning on the speed, and he gets all the way to midfield and into Montreal territory before Steve Benjamin, the cornerback on that side, finally forces him out. It's a 25-yard gain by Gary Allen, the University of Hawaii graduate. Watch the block by number 12, Tim Petros, his fullback in this game. He just comes in and throws a super block on Lamont Jeffers, cuts him down, and that enables Gary Allen to get to the outside. And Boy, that's the way you like to open up a ball game. First of all, running with the football and getting some, some success doing it. So 1,028 yards on the year now for Gary Allen as the Stampeders have a first down at the Montreal 53. And on the draw, they give it to Tim Petrus, and Petrus gets inside the 45 to about the 44 before Ken Chantoni, number 75, the veteran linebacker, was there to bring him down. An offensive line that has protected their quarterback better than any other in the CFL. And how about number 57, Big Bob Poley, the offensive center, nine years in the league, and he was last week's PWA Lineman of the Week. And that's the front four that they're going to have to protect Rick Johnson from. Tim Petras picked up eight yards, so make it second and two. This is Allen, dragged down back of the line of scrimmage by number 71, the toaster, Brett Williams, who has had just an outstanding season for the Alouettes in 1986. Yeah, he really has, and that front four, they do an excellent job. Watch how he slants down, fights off the block, and of course stops Gary Allen well short of that first down marker. So it's third down and three yards to go, and they're going to go for it from the 45-yard line. They give to Petros a gigantic hole. Nobody in there. Petros is inside the 20, down to the 10-yard line before Terry Urban, the cornerback, was able to come across and make the tackle. But absolutely nobody in those linebacking spots as the right side of that, Ed that Calgary offensive line blew away the defensive line, and then it was clear sailing. That's a great job by the center, Bob Poley. He chips off the defensive tackle, picks up the middle linebacker, and... Tim Petros on a third down gamble is off and running third, 35 yards later. Calgary's really in good scoring position. So it is first down from the 10 yard line. Johnson on a quarterback draw. And boy, they saw something in the game highlights because 
Johnson goes in unmolested for the Calgary touchdown. And on the first offensive series, the staff beaters are really, really impressive looking. Well, they really did pick up a weakness from the film sessions, obviously, as Pat mentioned. Twice in a row, they go in that area where there's a new middle linebacker, number 43, Will Coakley, and Gary Johnson, or Rick Johnson, rather, makes a nice move to get into the end zone. And so J.T. Hay, the leading scorer in the CFL, will try the point after, and as usual, it is good. And boy, oh boy, you have to take your hats off to the Calgary Stampeders for coming in here knowing exactly what they wanted to do on their first offensive series, and here's the payoff. Well, there's a nice job by Bob Foley. Once again, he takes the toaster right out of the scheme of things. A nice move to get around Dave Daniels, and Rick Johnson's into the end zone with the first touchdown of the game. So it's a 7-0 ball game. Stan Peters out in front of Montreal. We'll have the Cowboys kickoff in just a moment. Bruce bounces it short. Alouette's had problems, but Brett Williams finally does pick it up. And Williams gets it out over the 40 to the 41-yard line. Hay did not keep the deep. As a matter of fact, he kicked it to the second line of receivers, and Brett Williams was able to carry it back over the 40-yard line. Every one of those yards, a running play, as the Stampeders just jammed it down the Alouette's throat. So now let's see what the Montreal Alouettes can do. They were impressive in the second half last week against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders as Brian Ransom starts at quarterback. And Ransom carries himself, gets out over the 45 to about the 48 before running into linebacker Bernie Morrison, who has been such a stalwart in that Calgary defensive alignment for the last yeah, six years. Yeah. One change there you see is number 22, yards. Wes Cooper, will be placed Tony Johns in the starting backfield today. Tony Johns still is available to play. Same receiving cores they used last weekend. A couple of newcomers, Gerald Alphen and Gil Stiegel. James Hood, of course, 88 receptions on the year coming into this game, having just a fabulous 1986. And as Sean Faulkner picks up the first down for the Alouettes, we will look for James Hood to make a reception because his very first one will tie him for the club lead, the all-time record in a single season with Nick Araki, and he has also surpassed the great Hal Patterson. Well, that group you see right there, as this is their fourth week together, and head coach Gary Dirchick said, this is finally the group that he has that they can do the job, and last week they protected Brian Ransom superbly. Did not give up a sack, as a matter of fact, in last week's ball game against Saskatchewan. First down from the 52, this is Sean Faulkner. He played extremely well last week against Saskatchewan, picked up over 130 yards, but this time the Calgary defensive alignment was there to shut him down. Anthony Woodson, who returns to that Stampeder defensive alignment, was there to make the tackle for Calgary. So on second down and nine yards to go, Ransom will have to put it up. He had some time, but James Walker finally got to him and is there to record the sack. Well, it's not surprising. The Calgary Stampeders lead the CFL in sacks with 77 coming into this game. That's James Walker's sixth sack this year, and they do an excellent job putting pressure on the quarterback. There you see Harold Hallman, number 99, coming on a loop, but finally it's defensive end James Walker that comes around the block and makes the sack. So Richie Hull... And Gary Allen will drop back to receive this punt from Zen and Andresition. Well, the Calgary defense is a real gambling defense. You know, and often they can get burned with it, but more often than not this year, they've been successful. Andresition hangs it high. It goes to Hopkins, who was able to evade the first wave of tacklers and get to the 35. And so, with nine minutes and 57 seconds left to play in this first quarter, it's a 7-0 ball game. Stampeders lead the Alouettes. Offense back on the field. I had a chance to talk with a couple members about whether or not they had spotted something in the Montreal defense. And apparently the word is from Rob Smith, offensive tackle, is that on every offensive play on their last drive, the one that resulted in the touchdown, he says the Alouettes have been expecting pass. He says the draw has been just wide open. Well, he certainly didn't tell you any lies there because it was. Allen dropped the football. The Alouettes have recovered it at the 37-yard line. 
And number 69, Rayford Cooks, the newcomer in at that defensive tackle spot, was the Alouette to come up with the fumble. And boy, when you can score it upon and you can't get anything going on your first series, this is a real great. They get the ball deep in Calgary territory. Looked like a pretty good handoff. It's just that Gary Allen never got the handle on it. Now, Montreal is playing some new people tonight because they want to have a look at them. They know that this season is over, but they're building now for next year. And Cooks comes through with a very big play to give Montreal possession at the Calgary 33. And there's the catch by number 80, James Hood. And that ties him with Nicaraki for the all-time single-season record for an Alouette. His 89th reception of 1986, and it's a pass pattern they used last week very successfully. Just he goes down about 70 yards, stops, turns inside, the ball's delivered quickly, and then there's a lot of pressure on the cornerback, Mel Jenkins, to make the tackle, but he made a good tackle there. That's what Brian Ransom's really done well in the last few weeks, is completed the high percentage passes. 11 yards to pick up the ball just outside the 25-yard line. First down, Montreal. And on the draw play, this is Wes Cooper. And the young Canadian fullback gets it inside the 25 to about the 23 before he's nailed by James Walker, number 77, the defensive end. Yeah, James Walker's a little slow to get up. He took, you know, sometimes those running backs can deliver a blow themselves, and that time Wes Cooper really unloaded on James Walker. Walker, however, is walking it off, if you'll pardon. <laughs> you didn't say that, did you? But he's staying in the ball game. It's second down, about six yards to go, Montreal. Ransom fires over the middle, wide open for the touchdown is Sean Faulkner. Well, the Alouettes capitalize on the Gary Allen fumble and take it in on two plays. That one, a 22-yard pass and run Brian Ransom to Sean Faulkner and we're a point away from having a tied ball game oh and that's what you want to do is just take advantage of the turnover if you can and the middle open wide up and there was number 36 Sean Faulkner with his second touchdown catch and what a great play he made to get into the end zone well that's what we saw Montreal do last week they really took advantage of their opportunities the big Z he had a great night five field goals last week and he's good with the point after. And this game not unlike last week's game where the Alouettes fell behind early and then fought back. Well, on second and six, Brian Ransom gets excellent pass protection and John Faulkner sneaks up the middle. He's wide open. Fights pass number 14, Larry Hogue, and he's into the end zone. We've got a tie game. We sure have. It's Calgary 7, Montreal 7, and we'll be back in just a moment. It's a tie ball game at seven points apiece as Zen and Andrew Sishin is set to kick it off for the Montreal Alouettes with Ronnie Hopkins 15 and Gary Allen 23 back to return this one. And it's Hopkins. And Montreal playing with a great deal of enthusiasm to this pointer down quickly to drop him at the 35 yard line. It was Matt Finley, number 37, the reserve linebacker there to make the hit. Well, there's the look at the Montreal linebacking brigade. You'll notice that is a strange name, Will Coakley, playing in the middle in place of William Mitchell tonight. He's one of the guys they want to have a look at. You didn't see much of him in the first series of downs because he just wasn't in the area where he should have been. <laughs> He's a three-year veteran of the USFL and, of course, coming to Montreal as a free agent. Allen with the ball carrier gets to the 38-yard line for a pickup of three, but it was nice to see Rick Johnson come right back to him after that fumble that Allen was responsible for previously. And he finally met the middle linebacker of the Alouettes, Will Coakley, number 43. Oh, Will's changed his number on us tonight. He's wearing 53 instead of 43, as they reported. On second and seven, fires complete to Emmanuel Tolbert. And Tolbert has the first down in Montreal territory at the 53-yard line before Ken Chanconi was there to bring him down with help from Steve Benjamin. Let's have a look at Emmanuel Tolbert once again having a fabulous year coming into this game. 63 catches. This is his 64th. He reads zone coverage, and rather than keep running out towards the cornerback, he stops, hooks up. Rick Johnson reads it, and they've got a first down. And once again, Calgary's moving the football pretty easily. And that was their first pass of the ball game. Goes for 17 yards, gives 
Rick Johnson and his offensive unit. First down in Montreal territory at the 53. Johnson fires over the middle, and it is complete to Tim Petros coming out of the backfield. And again, it was Copley, the middle linebacker, making the stop. Rick Johnson's offensive line is the leader. They're the leaders in the CFL in the sack give-up department. They've only allowed 40 sacks this year. And on that last pass play, you can tell why. They just gave Rick Johnson so much time to throw the football. He was able to step up and deliver a good strike into Petros. Well, there's Bob Vespasiani, who has taken a club that finished fifth last year and guided it to a tie for fourth at the moment and hoping to grab a playoff spot here tonight. The pass was batted up in the air and very nearly fell into the hands of Emmanuel Tolbert. Turn in four. Number 15, Brian Dudley, and I believe it's, well, it's number 72, Lamont Jeffers, that initially tips the ball. Dudley gives it a little drop kick up in the air, and nobody can get to it. Montreal's defense currently fourth in the league in total defense, and that's pretty good for a club that's struggled all season long. So the Stampeders will not gamble this time from virtually the same spot on the field and about the same length. They went for it on their first drive, but this time J.T. Hay will attempt the field goal, but it is short. The Alouettes, however, will leave it in there, and it'll go as a single point for J.T. Hay. Well, what it does, too, is bring it back out to the line of scrimmage, so they're happy to give up the single point and to get it back with great field position. comes all the way back up to the 47-yard line. And there you see Gary Turchick. You have to be happy for him. He's had a couple of big wins recently over the BC Lions, and of course last week that exciting win over the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and I think he's really got these guys motivated to finish out the season. And just a terrific guy. I mean, a pleasant fellow to be around, and yet unfortunately the rumor here in Montreal is that he won't be around here next year, and if that does happen, it's unfortunate. He's a very decent human being. Well, they've got a problem with the clock now. It registers eight minutes and one second as Brian Ransom walks over and chats it up with Gary Durchick. They're going to try to get that repaired and see what can happen as the Stampeders have an 8-7 to seven lead on the 54-yard missed field goal by J.T. Hay. You know, you wonder why Montreal could come in here and play well tonight. Durchick said he listed 15 things on the blackboard. All were reasons why they should win this football game. And he said, I sat around for half an hour, and I couldn't come up with one legitimate reason why they shouldn't play well and win. And he said, I think the guys will be ready. Well, I, I agree with that, Pat. Of course, you know, last week you and I talked about the fact that there's a lot of fellas on this Montreal team that are playing for next year's jobs. You know, there's some guys like Brett Williams and Doug Scott. Fellas like that, you, you know they're going to be around, but there's some fellas like Will Coakley, who we talked about already. There's some defensive backs like Brian Dudley and Dave Daniels. Well, those are the kind of fellas that are playing for 1987 right now. Yeah, and the other thing is this. They want to go to camp next year with guys that they know are going to be on their roster in all of 1987, with two or three exceptions, because they just feel like they've been in training camp all of 1986, and yet... They have never been blown out of a game with the exception of the contest against the Hamilton Ticats. The clock should be at 640, apparently, and it's now at 801. So there's a malfunction there. So the time will be kept as it always is on the field, but we'll relay it to you thanks to the headlines. Well, as a matter of fact, they may even get the guy out with the screwdriver and see if he can fix it because they, <laughs> they would like to uh, get the clock working properly. Well, there you see the official score table, which is, of course, that field level. And Jacques DeCary says, we're not waiting any longer. Let's get moving here. So the Alouettes will start from their 47-yard line. And they would hope to get close enough for a Senate Andrew Sisson field goal attempt at least. As Sean Faulkner saw that the outside was cut off, but what he didn't know that it was cut off on the inside too because Bernie Morrison just slid right over with him and made the tackle. Got him right at the line of scrimmage virtually. Bernie Morrison's an interesting guy. He's been around for nine years from the University of Manitoba. I played against him and I always felt like in the last few years he's been one of the more underrated linebackers in the West. He 
Had four interceptions this year, a couple of sacks. You know, he's really played well. One of those unassuming guys. Second down and virtually 10 yards to go for Brian Ransom in that Alouette offense. He looks, he throws. The catch is made. Boy, it was really played well by Ronnie Hopkins because had the receiver been able to get to the outside, Gil Stiegel, uh, he'd have gone all the way. Yeah, that really was a good offensive scheme, too. They had everybody going to the right, and then the single receiver back to that side, and, boy, Ronnie Hopkins just makes an outstanding tackle. One-on-one -on, -one on the open field, and if he beats him, there's nobody between him and the goal line. That's why it was such a great play by Hopkins, as Zen and Andrew Sishin will endeavor to kick the Stampeders into some difficulty here as Richie Hall, 27, drops back along with 23, Gary Allen. get Richie Hall back at his own 15 yard line. Great coverage. Well the special teams of the Alouettes have actually played pretty well this season. That may be their most consistent part of their football. You know Pat it's been five years now since I played and, and that's the one thing I always remembered about any Montreal team that their kick returns and and their coverage of kicks was always excellent going back to the days when Marv Levy was coaching the team. Always good on the special teams. So the Stampeders start in a hole at their own 15-yard line. If you want to see somebody come out of a hole in a hurry, it's the man at the controls right now, Rick Jess. On the drop play, Gary Allen is up over the 20 to the 21-yard line before, once again, Ken Chanconi is there to make the stop. The flag on the far side of the field. Brian Dudley was going at it with one of the Calgary receivers. I couldn't see who it was. Just yeah. to see how they call this. It's going to be called against Brian Dudley, yeah, and here's so. Jacques DeCarry. 15, Joe Major foul, face mask, Montreal number 15, first down. Well, that's a big penalty against Brian Dudley. A face mask call moves the ball to the 35 with five minutes left to play in this opening quarter, and now the clock is functioning once again. You don't like to let a good team like Calgary, you know, they can move the ball pretty well on their own. You don't like to help them out with those 15-yard penalties. So it's first down for the Stampeders from the 35-yard line their own, and the Alouettes were outside, so this will be a free one for Johnson. He fires it across the middle to about the 38-yard line. Pass was caught by Gary Allen, but Doug Scott had jumped outside. So they'll accept the penalty because Allen only picked up four yards. back-to-back -back penalties and as I said you don't need to help these guys they can move it pretty well on their own offside Montreal number 70 first down repeat incidentally I want to mention for all you folks in the Ottawa area who are followers of the Ottawa Sooners and I know I am because nephew Sean plays in their defensive secondary they've got the big game here in Montreal one o'clock for the Eastern Canadian Junior Championship against the Shadow Gay Raiders. So if you want to drive up, why don't you do so? Ball comes loose after it appeared to be cut, but they will simply rule an incomplete forward pass. That game, incidentally, that I was talking about for the Eastern Junior Football Championship of Canada takes place at the University of Montreal. Here's Emmanuel Tolbert coming across the middle, and... He really never had control of that football as he hit the ground. That was an excellent call. So it's second down and five yards to go for Rick Johnson from his own 40-yard line. Johnson bought himself some time and then was fortunate that his pass wasn't picked up. Well, credit Terry Urban, number 32, with just a super job in coverage on Tony Woodruff. Tony Woodruff saw Johnson in trouble and was trying to work his way back to the quarterback, but Terry Urban, the veteran from Jackson State, just made a super play to stay with him. So we'll see Glenn Harper in the ball game now. Boy, he's had his troubles this year. They blocked a lot of punts on him. Five, I think it is. Of course, it's not always his fault. No, like that pass from center wasn't the greatest. 
And this is Jeff Treflin. And Treflin, who had an outstanding game last week against Saskatchewan, is wrapped up immediately by Rob Smith, number 54, who was first downfield for the Stampeders. And so Montreal will begin inside their 35-yard line. So they actually give up 12 yards on the exchange. It's an 8-7 to seven ball game in favor of the Stampeders, who scored on their very first possession, held Montreal, and then on the second possession of the ball game, Gary Allen coughed up a fumble. Montreal recovered, and three plays later, they had tied it at 7. J.P. Hay missed a 54-yard field goal attempt. And that's where we are with 335 left to play in this opening quarter. Another corporal's guard here at the Big O, which is unfortunate because the players have really been giving it their all the last few weeks. Ryan Ransom looks, fires. Boy, this looked like a volleyball exchange for a while. It was batted in the air. Could have been completed, could have been intercepted. Oh, it hit Greg Peterson right in the head. Watch this one now. It's going to go through the fingers of the receiver. Watch this. Hits him right in the face. <laughs> Greg, get the hands up there, buddy. Get I don't catch think it with your face mask. I think he must have anticipated that the ball was going to be caught or at oh, least knocked so. down at that point. So it's second and ten Alouettes from their 35. pass from Brian Ransom all the way down to the 25-yard line to Gil Spiegel, number 85. He got Ronald Hopkins turned around, and Ronnie just couldn't adjust to the football as the Alouettes pick up 53 yards. Well, that's the thing. He got in behind him, and even though the ball's a little bit under thrown, he's able to react back to it, and Ronnie Hopkins has no idea where it was. What a big play for Montreal. So it is first down, Alouettes, the ball at the Calgary 23 and a half yard line. Hanson fires quickly, and it's complete to Stiegel inside the 15 to the 14, with Hopkins again forced to make the stop. Well, it's not surprising, you know, with Gil Stiegel, when he played with Denver in the USFL, he got 16 passes in one game, and of course, that was the USFL record, and he makes a nice catch once again and fights upfield for what could be another first out. Stiegel's not a very big guy at 5'9 and 170, but they, he's a young man that they anticipate will be with this club for a while. At least they feel that he has the athletic ability to be a superior pass receiver in the Canadian Football League. Well, of course, it's one area of the Montreal team that uh, they finally feel they've got the right people in there. Gerald Alphin, Gil Stiegel, James Hood, and Jacques Chapdelaine. You know, it's not a bad receiving court. It's first down, Alouettes at the 13. Ransom goes and actually threw that ball away. There was excellent coverage by that Calgary secondary. And when Ransom saw that the pressure was coming, he just fired it right out. You know, Pat, though, that shows a little maturity on Brian Ransom's part. Rather than try and force the ball in, and, boy, he's sure done that a few times this year. He's given up 23 interceptions. He's in scoring range now. You don't want to give up that easy three that you're sure you've got. Of course, you want the touchdown. But if everything's jammed up, throw it away. And he did the smart thing. Ransom is 5 of 7 in passing so far for 103 yards. And that touchdown pass to Sean Faulkner. And he goes deep to the end zone this time. But unfortunately, it was over the head of the intended pass receiver, Gerald Alton. Well, he'd run an excellent pass pattern. And Brian Ransom just floated that ball out a little too far. Well, that brings on the big Z. And how about him last week? Five field goals, five for five. Now, as a matter of fact, he's been nine for nine since joining the Alouettes. He's got 991 points in the CFL. And with a point after already tonight, if he can kick this one through the uprights, he'll be just five back of that magic thousand mark. 20-yard field goal is good. And with a minute and seven left to play in the opening quarter, the Montreal Alouettes, who have had great success against Western opposition here at the Big O, they have defeated Edmonton, they have defeated British Columbia, they have defeated Saskatchewan, now go in front of Calgary 10 to 8. 
And as you look at Zen and Andrew Session number three, let's say that there's another area of the ball club that has been helped in the last few weeks because he has come in as the putter and field goal kicker and been very, very impressive in both. Yeah, they've struggled with their punting this year, and since he's come here, he's been able to help them out in that department. So the Stampeders elect to start from their 35. The toss goes to Gary Allen. This was the play that he started the ball game with. He picked up 25 yards on that occasion. This time he picks up 18 before Rayford Cooks finally forces him out. Number 69. Allen gives some credit to Marshall Toner, number 76, the slot back to that side of the field. He puts a great block on number 23, Dave Daniels, and that allows Gary Allen to get downfield. You know, anytime you get over 1,000 yards, obviously you've got some great athletic ability yourself, but that offensive line, those slot backs have done an excellent job blocking. Stampeders trailing 10 to 8, find themselves with a first down at their own 53-yard line. Pass is complete to Tolbert, but quickly on the spot is Steve Benjamin, number 2, to wrap him up after a pickup of maybe 3 yards. Well, Montreal had the perfect defense called for that play. They played a zone where they rolled the corner up, Steve Benjamin, and any time you're trying to throw a flat pass into a kind of zone coverage they had on, there's no way you're going to complete it for many yards. So give them three, make it second and seven. Rick Johnson has been good on three of six passes tonight for 26 yards. It's been the running game of the Calgary Stampeders that has stood out so far. Well, I think they've really confused the Montreal defense so far. Those linemen just can't pin their ears back and come. The pass was intended for Gary Allen. Johnson was forced to throw it before Allen had a chance to turn back and look at him. So it goes incomplete and the Stampeders will be punting when we come back, because at the end of the first quarter of play, it is Montreal 10. Cunningham doesn't get a very good one away. It takes a bounce to Jeff Treflin at the 19-yard line, and the cover team of the Stampeders was there in full force. He couldn't pick up any yardage at all as Woodson was down to make the tackle. Well, there's a look at what happened in the first quarter of play. You can see it was close enough. The big stat there is the turnover by Gary Allen because Montreal capitalized on it and three plays later went in for a touchdown. But it's been a close ball game and you can see that the statistical story is such that it would indicate that. They spot the ball at the 20-yard line and that's where Brian Ransom and the Montreal Alouette offense takes over. The toss goes to Sean Faulkner. And he is wrapped up back inside the 10-yard line at about the 8 by Harold Hallman who has had just an outstanding season, number 99, and may well be a Shenley candidate in a couple of categories for the Stampeders. Well, you know, we suggested at the top of the show that Montreal might be able to have some success running against the Calgary Stampeders. Not so. Number 14, Larry Hogue, was so deep in the backfield, Sean Faulkner had no chance to get that play going. Yeah, Harold Holmans really has played well, I think. He's had a terrific year, and there he creates a second and 20 situation for Montreal. The pass is complete to number 86, Gerald Alphen, and then has it stolen away. Ronnie Hopkins will make this one of the most unusual turnovers that you'll see in a football game. Let's take a look at how the pass was completed initially. Well, Gerald Alfred just makes a super catch, but watch the ball pop loose on the tackle by Greg Peterson. Outside, Montreal number 85, big number 15, line. Ronnie Hopkins down. has the ball. Montreal was called for offside, but Calgary, of course, will decline it. And they'll have the ball when we come back. They trail 10 to 8. The Alouettes are out in front, and we'll return in a moment. Well, there's Ronnie Hopkins. Boy, what a job he did to give the Stampeders a first down at the Montreal 37 on a very unusual play. As Rick Johnson looks, fires, a flag will come down, interference will be the call, Emmanuel Tolbert was the intended receiver, Rick Ryan will be called because of the collision. Well, that's one of those penalties that you have to call, but it's really an unfortunate situation. Forward pass in Hearns, Montreal number 27, first down. You know, Rick Ryan wasn't really trying to interfere with Emmanuel Tolbert, they just collided, and of course Emmanuel's entitled to his area, and the flag has to be thrown. He's breaking deep down the middle. That's Ryan's territory, but you see right there the bump and no question about that. 
So it is first down. Stan Peters, the ball at the Montreal 13. Calgary trailing by two points as we open the second quarter. And this is Gary Allen trying to get to the outside. But there was excellent pursuit by Lamont Jeffers, the linebacker, who came with him all the way from across the field and forced him out as Allen got just inside the 10-yard line. Well, both defenses tonight have really been good at penetrating that offensive line and making those running backs take a deep route to the outside. That time it was Steve Rocky, 99, and of course Lamont Jeffers cleaned up, but Harold Hallman's been able to do it. Now Steve Rocky for the Alouettes. Gentlemen, you did notice how unhappy Ron Hopkins looked in the bench. It just happens that was his man. He's told me he got beat deep and got very lucky. He doesn't feel real good about himself right now. As a matter of fact, he's been beaten deep a couple of times already in this ball game. It's second down, about seven yards to go. Tim Petras is inside the five to the three-yard line, and if he doesn't have the first down, he'll certainly be close enough for them to go for it. Lamont Jeffers again made the tackle for Montreal. Boy, a few times it really seems like Rick Johnson has crossed up that Montreal defense with his play selection. You know, you've got to be thinking second and six right there pass against the leading passing team in the country, and he crosses them up with a Tim Petras run. Well, Tony Woodruff goes out of the ball game. The short yardage offense comes in. I was just going to say they better send somebody else out, otherwise you're going to have 13 men on the field. But Marshall Toner leaves. And on third down and less than a yard, let's see what Rick Johnson elects to do. I would think he would keep it himself. But he doesn't. And just as well, because in for the touchdown is Gary Allen. So they weren't going for the first down. They were going for the touchdown, and they get it on Gary Allen's 13th, or excuse me, his sixth touchdown of the season. Yeah, that's his fifth touchdown rushing. And, of course, they go along the right side of that offensive line. They got Kari Lee Renko, George Gilbert, and Bob Foley. They're three big horses, and they do an easy job paving the way for Gary Allen to get in. Good block by number 12, Tim Petros, as well. But look at that job that offensive line's doing. Just blowing them right back about four yards. J.P. Hayes' point after is good, and the Stampeders are back out in front. They surrendered the lead for the only time in this ball game late in the first quarter, but they come roaring back. Stampeders 15, Montreal 10, and we'll return in a moment. Recover from adversity, come right back, and that's exactly what the Stampeders have done. They surrendered the lead, but then after they were given that opportunity on the fumble recovery by Ronnie Hopkins, they come right back and... Just a couple of plays later, scored the touchdown that has put them back out in front of Montreal, 15 to 10. As J.T. Hay will be kicking it deep to either Sean Faulkner, 36, or Jeff Treflin, 29. But he doesn't get it that deep, and again it will go to Brett Williams at the 31. <laughs> I love to see him run with it. Well, I mean, you're looking at a defensive lineman who loves running with the football and gets to the 48-yard line before running into Mike Emery. Well, 6'3 and 260 pounds, and it almost looks as though J.T. Hayes tried to kick it in that area, but watch the nice soft hands by Fred Williams. He gets the football, and this is his dream come true. Gets to run with it. Put that head down. He'll cover it up with two hands. He knows what he's doing. And Montreal is delighted with the field position. They take over at their own 49-yard line. They give us to Faulkner right off the bat. And Faulkner explodes into Calgary territory at the 47-yard line before little Richie Hall at 5'6 finally brings him down. Well, this is what they were able to do last week. They've got Tony Johns in the ball game, although he didn't really throw much of a block. He's a good blocking back, and Sean Faulkner really lays some punishment on number 27, Richie Hall. A 16-yard gain, first down, Montreal at the Calgary 47. Again, this is Faulkner. But this time, he doesn't have much success because Bernie Morrison got his hands on him first, and that tripped him up as he fell to the 45-yard line and enabled Vince Goldsmith to finally make the back. Pat, you were saying how instrumental the Calgary offensive line was in the last touchdown, and I'll tell you what, center Bob Pohl is willing to take all the credit. He says his line mates, the five guys down in front, are just blowing away Montreal's front three. Well, they sure are. It's second down and eight yards to go. As Ransom rolls out of there, stops, throws, and this one was very nearly picked off by Hopkins. He just... Jumped in front of James Hood. 
And before Hood could do anything about it, Hopkins almost had the ball in his hands. Well, you know, James Hood ran a pretty good pass pattern. We're going to have a look at him here as he breaks it to the outside. It's, he tries to push him deep and then break the. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that Brian Ransom was extremely late throwing the football. And Ronnie Hopkins had a great chance to, to make the interception. So after failing on second down, Zen and Andrew Sishin is in the ball game now to punt from the Calgary 45. There's no the question, you know, Brian Ransom throws better rolling to his right than he does to his left. Yeah, most quarterbacks do, of course. The ball will bounce into the end zone. And Allen watches it roll out of bounds. So credit Zen and Andrew Sishin with a single point. And the Montreal Alouettes have drawn to within four. It's Calgary 15. Alouettes 11. We'll be back in a moment. Well, if you will remember this face, you'll remember one of the great players in Montreal Alouette history, Steve Farragelli, who scored such a memorable touchdown in a great cup game. Steve, what are you doing now? Well, since I've left the game, I've joined a corporation called the Sir Winston Churchill Pub. It's a bar and a restaurant in downtown Montreal. I've been very successful there. I've been there for 10 years, and I haven't been traded, cut, or put on waivers, <laughs> so I can't complain, you know? Well, you look like you're in fit enough shape to be able to play this game, and earlier, the Alouettes could have used you. Well, I look at it when I played the game. I had a few injuries here and there. At least in the club, the only injuries I have is my liver, my kidney, and I've managed to survive that up to this time. Steve, you look terrific, and it's always a pleasure to see the guys who made the game so interesting for us. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Thank you. Steve Farragelli, the former great Montreal fullback, as the Alouettes and the Stampeders go at it, hammer and tong down here, the Stampeders with a second down, seven yard to go situation with the ball at their 38 yard line. Jackson in a whole lot of trouble because Steve Rocky was right in his face back at the 33 yard line. Well, that's what the Montreal Alouettes really need to do. They've got to try and get some pressure on Rick Johnson. They haven't been able to do so so far, but Steve Rocky comes in and gets a big sack, and, of course, they want to get that ball back. Now, Patty O, do you think there's a chance that you and I might be in to visit Steve after the game tonight? I don't know, but I'll tell you, he looks <laughs> dashing in that bow tie. I like that bow tie. Green bow tie. Well, he's a flashy guy. We all know that. So Glenn Harper will be putting on third down and 12. As the Alouettes come up big, they trail by only four points, and that one is blocked again. The sixth time this year that the Calgary Stampeders have had a punt block, and I believe this time it might have been Ken Chanconi. It indeed was. Ken Chanconi blocks the punt and makes the recovery at the 15-yard line. Well, all the teams in the CFL have watched the films, and a big gap is left. Ken Chanconi comes through. That's the easiest block he'll ever have, and what a break for the Alouettes. They've already scored on one turnover here in the first half. They get their second opportunity. And there's the look at it one more time, and Chanconi knew he had it all the way. There was absolutely nobody to pick him up as he came roaring through, and the Alouettes begin from the Calgary 15-yard line. Ransom on a delayed draw to Sean Faulkner, and Faulkner, who gained more than 130 yards against Saskatchewan last week, is into the six-yard line before James Walker finally brings him down. But of course, this is this is what Montreal would love to be able to do. Just take this ball, run it down Calgary's throat, and excellent blocking up front. Tony Johns leading the way once again, and well, they got a great opportunity to take the lead back and capitalize on the second turnover. Sean Faulkner, over 100 yards last week, in rushing against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He is definitely their back of the future. Montreal going nowhere in 1986, but having success against the West. The Stampeders trying to lock up a playoff berth. Now with their work cut out for them. As the Alouette's Tony Johns takes it to the five, and he would appear to have the first down. Jock to carry the referee says, let's bring those chains out here because this one is close. Well, if the ball's touching that five-yard line, it looks as though it may be a first down. Jacques Chapdelaine will bring the next play in from head coach Gary Durchik because they're conferring on the sidelines. Oh boy, that is boy. So short. And here comes Chapdelaine. He's coming in with the play called get the first down. <laughs> yeah, well, they've only got about <laughs> two inches to go. I mean, I would be flabbergasted if anybody but the quarterback carried this one. You're trailing by four points. You're midway through the second quarter. You've just gotten a big break. It's third down and inches to go. 
So let's watch and see. Brian Ransom is a quarterback. Now they got Tony Johns and they've got Sean Faulkner there, but they only need a couple of inches for the first down. Uh, Ransom dropped the football. Woodson may have recovered for the Stampeders because it appeared that the Alouettes were offside to begin with. And let's wait and see. Well, there's no question Kevin Molly jumped on the left side. It was either Kevin Molly or Lloyd Fairbanks. And what a break for the Stampeders. Oh, boy. Well, well you, you can't make the mistake like this. Procedure, Montreal 61, decline. First down, Calgary. Well, the reason that the Calgary Stampeders are fighting for a playoff spot and the Montreal Alouettes are not is a play like that. Now, you know what? That's really a good point, Pat. That's the difference between the good teams and the so-so teams. You just don't beat yourself. And what a great opportunity Montreal had to take the lead. And, well, you know, you only get so many chances in a game to score. You better take advantage. Handoff goes to Gary Allen. Is up to about the nine yard line with Rayford Cooks on his back, bringing him down at that point. Well, you know, Rayford Cooks must be a pretty good ball player because he's replacing Sandy Armstrong tonight, and Sandy Armstrong was having a good year. There's a look at the new middle linebacker, Will Coakley, and he gets his nose in there as well. Dan Peters would dearly love to pick up a couple of first downs right here. They have second down and seven yards to go at this moment. Johnson keeping it himself gets the first down and steps out as he gets to the 19-yard line. Good-looking play. He faked to both backs and just kept it himself and got outside. Well, you know, Rick Johnson really would rather not run with the football, but when you're backed up in your own end, you really got to do anything you can to get out of there. You want to try and get at least a couple of first downs, and then if you bog down, you can punt the ball away and have a little breathing room. But he did a nice job to get out of that pocket and run for the first down. And, of course, this is what they want. If they can get a couple of first downs, they don't have to move all the way down the field. Just get some breathing room and then hem Montreal in down in their territory. Oh, it's a game of field position. They want to just kind of reestablish something. Johnson's pass over the head of the intended receiver, Emmanuel Tolbert. It's funny, you know, we were talking about what to expect from Calgary tonight, and some people were saying they really figured that Johnson would fill the air with footballs. But so far, Stan Peters have been fairly conservative. He's only thrown eight times, completed three of them for 26 yards. And he better quit throwing that quick out to the short side of the field on first down because every time... Montreal has rolled their corner up, and there's no way you're going to be able to complete that ball. They completed one earlier to Emmanuel Tolbert, but they only picked up about three yards. So he has a second and ten. The ball at the Calgary 19. Johnson again rolls out of there. But this time he throws the football, and it is complete to Ray Alexander. Alexander will be short of the first down, being brought down by Terry Urban. <laughs> Ray Alexander makes the catch, but really it doesn't make a heck of a lot of difference because they're going to be well short of that first down. He was wide open. You know, he worked back to the quarterback. He ran an excellent pass pattern, took Terry Urban deep, and then worked back to the quarterback. But for some reason, Rick Johnson just did not want to throw it to him early enough. So Ray Alexander picks up his 81st pass reception of the year. Some people may say 81. Well, that's getting pretty close to the team record. Patio, you know who the team record holder is in Calgary. Oh, what a great one he was. Terry Evanson when he combined with Peter List. And Terry had well over 90. I believe it was around 96. Brian Dudley on the punt return gets it out over the 45 to the 47 for the Owls. Ryan Potter, number 33, was down to make the stop. Can't fool you with those trivia questions. 96 was the number. Terry Evanson did that. Well... What may be the biggest game of the year is the Stampeders' next and final home game of 1986 as they complete their 86 schedule against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Now, if they win tonight's ball game, they, of course, clinch the playoff spot. But if they don't, Saskatchewan comes to town for what could be the biggest game of 1986 in McMahon Stadium. Flags are down all over the field as Gil Spiegel on that reverse steps out of bounds at the 50 he'd only have a pickup of 
a couple of yards. He ran at least 60 to get the two. I think Dan Matheson ran about 60 yards to get out of the way of him. <laughs> well, shows Dan's a lot smarter than some people would have given him credit for. <laughs> I think Harold Holman got clipped in the backfield. I don't know how Jacques DeCary will determine this, but. Well, the old spy eyes were at it again. Holding Montreal number 61. First down repeated. But those are back to back real big miscues by Kevin Molly, the left offensive guard. He was the one who jumped offside when the ball was at the five yard line and now he's called for holding and it forces the Owls back inside their 40 to the 38 yard line. Hanson sets up the screen but the back couldn't get over there to make the catch on the ball. The blockers were out there. Polly was out there and short as Glenn Keeble but the ball didn't get to the back. Now sometimes Calgary coming in that all out blitz is very difficult to run a screen pass because somebody's got John Faulkner and man to man coverage and I believe it was 97 Garrett Dahl and he just said there's no way you're going to get out in this pass pattern. Second down and 20. Ransom is going deep. That one was very nearly picked up. It was intended for Ger Gerald Alton, but Mel Jenkins played it well, number 28, and so too did Larry Hogue. Yeah, they both came right together. In fact, I think had Larry Hogue not run into Mel Jenkins, he would have made the interception. But the big thing is the ball's knocked down. They're going to get it back to their offense. And what is a 15-11 game? Calgary St. Peter's ahead with four minutes and 20 seconds left to play in the second quarter. And that's Zen and Andrew Sisson punting for Toronto, or for her, uh, Montreal, rather. Very short punt. And flags come down as the Calgary Stampeders' Darcy Cop gets the ball out over the 50 to the 51. No yards will be called against the Alouettes. Interesting to see how they determine this. You know, this year, is, the rule has been changed that if there's a short punt and people are trying to get out of the way, they can... Of course, throw the flag, but then wave it off. But obviously, Jacques Decary and his staff felt that Montreal did not try and get out of the way of that short kick. It was a terrible putt by Andrew Sisson. No yards, Montreal number 22. First down. So they call Wes Cooper on the no yards penalty, and it gives the Stampeders a first down in Montreal territory at the Alouette 48 yard line. Well, he is a nifty little runner, though. He jumps to get inside the 35 to about the 33-yard line. Terry Irvin was there to bring him down at that point. Irvin playing the corner on that side for Montreal. And the left guard, number 61, Tom Spolatini, just came around and did a super job. You get your left guard out pulling, and he had the speed to get outside and seal it off to get Gary Allen outside. Terrific first half for Gary Allen. He's rushed the ball 11 times for 78 yards and he really has been the big part of that Calgary offense. First down Stan Peters from there from the Montreal 33. Again this is Allen. He's got the great balance. And he almost broke that one as he's brought down at the 10 yard line by Rayford Cooks. The newcomer playing that defensive tackle spot in place of Sandy Armstrong. Well I want to tell you and with three minutes left you'll tell us when we come back Leaf, because it is a 15 11 ball game Calgary out in front and on the move again we'll return in a moment. Get moving to extra old dog and get that real Zenith's clean, cube-shaped styling gives you so much screen from side to side and corner to corner, it makes watching television a whole new ball game. Zenith. Quality. Following today's telecast, the Carling O'Keefe Sports Offensive Game Star will receive a Royal Canadian Mint 
one ounce solid gold coin presented by Mita. At Mita, they believe the best way to make better copiers is not to make televisions. Mita, just great copiers, nothing else. Dan Peters with three minutes and two seconds showing on the clock left to play here in the second quarter would really like to increase their four-point margin. Rick Johnson at the controls from the 10-yard line. He fakes to Gary Allen, rolls right, throws. No good. There was terrific coverage by Dudley on the intended pass receiver, Marshall Toner. He really did do a great job. Number 15 is Brian Dudley. He's got a couple of interceptions in 1986, and... It was a tough pass pattern to defend because there was a lot of play action in the backfield. Johnson rolling out, so there's a lot of time for Marshall Toner to run his pass route, but Brian Dudley stayed right with him. And aren't you just delighted at the success that Marshall Toner has had? A kid who came from the University of Saskatchewan, wasn't even drafted in the CFL, wrote letters, and Bud Riley was the only one who'd invite him to camp. Yeah, so that's good for Marshall Toner. I agree. That's some story, isn't it? it really is. Johnson's pass, touchdown, Stampeders. And who else but Ray Alexander, the big guy? He just ran a super pass pattern on number two, Steve Benjamin. And the timing was just perfect. Just as he was going to make his break, Rick Johnson had delivered the football. That is such a tough pattern to cover. And there you see Rick Johnson with his 29th touchdown pass of the season. And Ray Alexander working back to the football. Nice soft hands. And, of course, he picks up his 10th touchdown. And the Stampeders pad their lead. J.T. Hayes' point after is good. And the Stampeders now lead it 22 to 11 with two minutes and 48 seconds left to play in the second quarter. Well, I think that fumble on the Calgary five-yard line by Brian Ransom really might come back to haunt the Alouettes tonight. Here's an ISO on Ray Alexander. He's a great target, six foot three. And as he makes his break to the outside, look how sharp he makes it. He's working back to the quarterback. That's an absolutely perfect pass pattern. Jack Newman, a good friend of ours, who to me is one of the outstanding publicity agents and PR people in all of sport, who's with the, the University of Calgary Dinosaurs, called to tell me that the big game of the year in college football out west takes place tomorrow at McMahon Stadium. It's the North-South Shrine Contest with the Dinosaurs hosting the Alberta Golden Bears. Ilio Jeremiah, who we saw in the Vanier Cup last year, will be looking to go over the 1,000-yard rushing on the year, and he'll also be trying to break the 20-year rushing record set by Paul Brule, an old friend of yours and mine. Paul established it in 1966 when he was playing at the other end of the country down on the Maritimes. On the kickoff, this is Jeff Treflin. A flag comes down as Treflin does an excellent job to get to the 45-yard line. Terry Urban was trying to lead some interference for him. Darcy Kopp was there to make the tackle, but let's see what the penalty marker is about. Now, well, number 29, Jeff Treflin. He's the leader in kickoff returns this year and will probably win that category. Holding Montreal number 22, first down. Number 22 is Wes Cooper, and he's called for holding, so the big return is back to the 29-yard line. Well, mistakes have been really costly for the Alouettes. You know, that fumble on third down, now a holding penalty that knocks off about 20 yards, and they're just making it tough for themselves. Ransom's pass is caught by James Hood, but he'll only have a short game. You know, the sign of a well-coached football team, though, are the number of penalties it takes not only in critical situations, but throughout the course of the ball game. Calgary has not had a penalty tonight. Montreal has had seven. Now, it also shows the discipline of the clubs, of course, too. Jacques Chapelin with the reception for a first down for the Alouettes over the 40 to the 43-yard line. There are a lot of things to coaching, and Bob Vespasiani brings a lot of them to the Calgary Stampeders. But the job is bigger than just coaching, too. It's also media relations. Great ball. And Bob uh, has a piece to go with that, but he's certainly done a terrific job in coaching this football team. The pass is caught for a very, very short game by number 21 of the Montreal Alouettes. That's Tony Johns. 
He does get the ball out of bounds, so that'll stop the clock. Tony John's in his second year from Henderson State at Lawrence Park Secondary School graduate of Toronto. You know, this didn't happen to the Alouettes too much last week. They didn't find themselves in a great deal of second and long situations. This is a tough second down situation to pick up because Calgary's got so many blitzes and stunts, they're a tough team to block. Montreal better pick up a first down or they'll be turning the ball back over to Calgary on a punting situation after this down. But that's a big pass and a big catch for the Alouettes for the first down by James Hood. Mel Jenkins was there to make the tackle immediately, but too late to prevent the yardsticks being moved as Hood got into the Calgary 53. Well, Mel Jenkins has come up and made some good hits on the receivers tonight. Ransom fires, and it's knocked away by the middle linebacker Anthony Woodson, number 96. Well, he had a brief stint in the NFL with the Denver Broncos, and he really wasn't big enough to play in the NFL, especially in the middle, but he's ideally suited for the Canadian Football League. 6'3", 224. He's got 4 six speed in the 40, and he showed you his quickness right there as he stepped in front of that intended pass. Well, we've got an injured ball player. It is Harold Holman, number 99, who may well be in the running for a couple of Shenley Awards on behalf of the Calgary Stampeders, but we were saying in the Eastern Conference, we were saying this in the cab on the way out, who would you vote for as the outstanding top player in the East? I mean, the only well, person that comes to mind is James Hood. Yeah, the only that's, one. that's really the only one I can think of in, in that particular category. Well, just want to remind you that Ray Alexander, who has had such an outstanding season for the Calgary Stampeders in 1986, We'll take a look at him personal and up close. We'll have the Pacific Western Star of the Week. And that, of course, is James Hood. And Doug Mitchell will be along to answer your letters on Ask the Commissioner. Lee Pedersen, of course, will be along with his halftime highlights as we take a look at Harold Holman. Yeah, stay tuned for that Ray Alexander personal up close. I had a chance to see it already, and I think you'll really enjoy it. He has some interesting things to say. It's second and ten, Montreal in Calgary territory. Ransom never had a chance. You could just see that the big guy, number 78, Vince Goldsmith, was going to chase him down from behind. Ransom was running as hard as he could, but with every step, he was losing three yards to Vince Goldsmith. Of course, we talk about Shenley's in 1981. Vince Goldsmith was the Shenley Rookie of the Year. Well, the Stampeder defense did a big job because they shut Montreal down when they got into their territory, and now Zen and Andrew Sisson will be punting. This is a much better kick than his last one. My goodness, it is Gary Allen with the football. I didn't think that the Stampeders would risk it. Until the sign valves out. Well, we want to tell you that first place is up for grabs in the Eastern Conference when the Toronto Argonauts go to Hamilton for one of the great rivalries in the CFL. Game is at 1.30. It's Hall of Fame Day. The great Hall of Famers, many of them who are already in the hall, will be there. And the new inductees will be on hand as well. And we'll have it for you here on CTV Sunday afternoon at 1.30, a game that in all likelihood will decide first place in the Eastern Conference. Johnson gets out to the 25-yard line, which is very close to a first down. Will Coakley, the middle linebacker, was there to make the stop. But you've got to believe that Bassiani was saying to himself, don't get hurt late in the second quarter as we're on our way to the playoffs. I don't know. they got to have this guy there. You know, he's, he's thrown a lot of interceptions. We talked about that. But as long as you're throwing more touchdowns than the are interceptions, I don't worry about that in the CFL. No, the guy likes to throw the football, and he does it well. This is Gary Allen. And Allen, boy, showing you some determination there as he just kept those legs pumping out over the 30 to the 32-yard line. You know, he's not a big man. He's only 5'10", 185, but he's able to take that football and run between the tackles and run pretty hard with it. So Allen picks up the first down, and Johnson quickly wants to put this one up. Great effort by Alexander. 
Uh, he's made some circus catches this year. Unfortunately, he just couldn't stretch out for that one, but what a find he's been. He joined the St. Peters last year, and at six foot three, he's a nice target, runs excellent pass patterns. I believe I had a chance to chat with him just after the touchdown, and he was saying he's just grateful to get a ball thrown in the air. The running game's been working so well that uh, Johnson really hasn't been putting it up that much. And yet the Stampeders have doubled the score on the Alouettes to this point. With a minute 14 left to play in the second quarter, it's Calgary 22, Montreal 11. Second and 10, Stampeders from their 32-yard line. Well, Johnson, not afraid to keep it himself, does, gets the first down up to the 45-yard line. Well, I'm sure that's a designed quarterback draw because number 61, Tom Spalatini, broke off and led Rick in Johnson up through the hole, and Rick Johnson's had a few yards rushing himself in this first half. Matter of fact, scored a touchdown rushing in the first quarter. The out to Toner and Marshall steps out of the 50-yard line for a gain of six. Well, they're putting a pretty good drive here. There's a minute and two remaining in the first half, and Rick Johnson's been able to get his club up to the 50-yard line. So the clock will not start until the snap of the ball because Toner was able to get out of bounds. It rests right on the Calgary 50-yard line. A first, a second down. Stampeders and four yards to go. This is Tim Petras. Petras has the first down to the 50-yard line. As the University of Calgary dinosaur graduate picks up another first down. Lamont Jeffers, 72, was there to make the tackle for the Alouettes. Well, this is the tough thing for Montreal's defense when they're playing against a team whose reputation is all passing. You know, it's tough to really gear yourself up to try and stop the run. Well, except they should have known that Gary Allen picked well, up over 1,000. Emmanuel Tolbert with a terrific catch down at the 11-yard line. There is a penalty marker on the field, but Tolbert just made a great catch down at the 11. But it'll be coming back. It's almost, it's uncanny the way penalties negate big plays. Well, Talbot ran a super pattern and got in behind number 15, Brian Dudley. Made a nice catch, but doesn't mean anything. Procedure, Calgary number 88, first down repeated. Well, you know what that means? Ray Alexander was in a hurry to get off that line, and so it's only a five-yard penalty, and it's only the first one of the night for the Stampeders, but it cost them about 50 yards. And about eight seconds. <laughs> yeah. 48 seconds left to play in the second quarter of a 22-11 ball game favoring the Stampeders. The screen pass is set up for Allen. Now, is this guy a great back, though? He saw there was absolutely nothing on the side that the screen was set up, so he just said to himself, I'm cutting this thing back in, and instead of losing about eight yards, he picks up, well, he only gets five, but he gets it to the 50-yard line. Johnson's pass, too high for even plastic. Ray Alexander went up with Terry Irvin providing the coverage, but he couldn't get to the ball. And now we're down to 31 seconds with the ball at the 50-yard line. Let's see if J.T. Hay comes up. No, they have Glenn Harper out to punt. Well, with the success, success they had earlier in blocking Glenn Harper's punt, you wouldn't be surprised to see them go after it once again. And Chad Coney got to a Harper punt earlier in this ball game, but then the Alouettes couldn't punch it in from the five-yard line. Looks like Calgary's just having a heck of a tough time pointing out which guys they're going to block. They're all messed up here. picks it high but not very deep and it goes out of bounds right at the 25 yard line so the Alouettes have 24 seconds now do they elect to go deep themselves are they content to go to the locker room down by 11 we're going to find out as Bob Vespasiani paces the sidelines this is an extremely important ball game for the Stampeders a victory and they clinch that final playoff spot in the Western Conference 
Well, they've been an exciting team to watch this year. They really have turned the corner and great offensive team to watch. James Hood wasn't anywhere near the football, and he was the intended receiver. You know, I really have to believe that that fumble down on the five-yard line is really kind of taking the wind out of Brian Ransom's sails just a touch. He doesn't seem to be nearly as sharp since that happened. Well, it was an opportunity for Montreal to actually go ahead in the ball game, and when they didn't do so, Calgary marched right back and eventually scored another touchdown. And throws wide open is Tony Johns, and John steps out at the 41 yard line of the Alouettes with 14 seconds left. Well, he did a smart thing there. He sent three receivers to the one side of the field, and they dropped deep trying to prevent against the long pass. He dumped it off to Tony Johns, who was wide open. I don't think they've got enough time to get down the field goal range, but nevertheless, it was a good offensive play. 14 seconds left to play in the second quarter. They need a big one here. Well, Ransom falls forward to uh, within inches of a first down, but he ate up 10 seconds. Anthony Woodson, the middle linebacker, finally brought him down. But that was a play that looked like it was going in slow motion. Well, I think he was really trying to get and throw the football. I think number 97, Garrett Dahl, is going to be charged with spearing or roughing, no matter how you determine it. But he really gave Ransom a shot. Major foul, spearing Calgary, number 97, first down. Well, good call by the spy, Lee Pedersen. And, in fact, it is a spearing penalty down to the 45-yard line. With nope. Zen and Andrew Sisson on the field to attempt a 52-yard field goal. And you're going to see the spearing penalty coming up. Garrett Dahl just tries to plant that helmet right into Brian Ransom. Although he didn't get a big piece of him, I'm glad to see that called. This one will be short. So Gary Allen picks it up and look out. is forced <laughs> out of bounds by Zen and Andrew Sisson, who probably seconds That's before that was saying, why did I come back? Allen. Because he was the last man back there. He I forces Allen good. out as the second quarter comes to an end with the Calgary Stampeders very impressive in that opening 30 minutes. They lead the Montreal Alouettes 22-11. He's got a little height. He has, uh, he has speed and he has quickness and uh, the, the ability to concentrate and, uh, and be precise in running pass routes comes with time. First of all, I think he's got the natural tools uh, and I think the, the second most important thing that I've seen out of James is that he has not leveled off. He's gotten better each week or trying to get better. He really works at things that he needs to get better on. And I would say this in this last week's game, he's had some very good games uh, throughout the season. But it's probably his best overall performance. James broke into the CFL last year in Winnipeg and was back up to James Murphy and Jeff Boyd. It did help me out a lot. I, I watched them a lot at practice, and I try to imitate their moves. And, you know, I, I would try to add some of their skills to the skills that I'd already had. And it made me a better all-around wide receiver, I would have to say. James refuses to be covered. Uh, in other words, if a guy is, is really good as a defensive back and, and, and provides a good man-to-man -man coverage, James has the desire necessary to, to keep working and not allow himself to be defeated. In other words, if he has a route to run and the guy is with him, he'll fight and claw and do all he can to get in the position necessary to catch the ball. I've acquired a taste for contact. I'm not scared to be hit, and I'm not scared to hit anyone, so that helps a great deal, you know, being at the wide receiver spot, because you're going to take some shots. You're going to take some crucial shots. I have the confidence, and I'm not, so to speak, I'm not scared of that contact, and I, I just go out there and have fun when I'm out there. James, he's, he's, he knows he's good, but, you know, just, that's good to have that kind of confidence. You know, you, he goes out there, he knows what he can do. Before the game, he says, I'm going to do this, and he does. He goes out and does it. 
The Stars of the Week profile has been brought to you by Pacific Western Airlines to bring you the Grey Cup 100 contest again this year. This is CTV's Friday Night Football. This woman. Oh, it really is. But Montreal fought back. They got a fumble recovery by Rayford Cooks, and then Brian Ransom took advantage immediately. He hit their bright new star, Sean Faulkner, over the middle, and he got into the end zone with a 22-yard touchdown reception. That tied the game at 7-7. But it was Gary Allen in the first half, 111 yards rushing himself. This time, he took a 25 yards downfield. A great block from his running mate, Tim Petros. But Gary Allen, we've mentioned, over 1,000 yards, the big part of their offensive machine rushing the football. That set up Ray Alexander's 10th touchdown of 1986, and what a super year he's had. Rick Johnson sets it up perfectly. A good pass pattern. Alexander has the catch, and at that point, it made it 22-11, which is how we stand at halftime here. Well, this is it, 22 to 11, and this is CTV's Friday Night Football. Rick Johnson, he's all set. The Montreal Alouettes were down by a considerable margin against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders last week, but they were able to come back. Will they be able to do so against Calgary tonight? We're going to find out because we are just about set to go in this second half. Really, the first half wasn't totally dominated by Calgary, but Montreal had a glorious opportunity to really get into the football game, but they couldn't convert on third and inches. Down on the five-yard line, Calgary took over and marched all the way for a touchdown. You know, I think we may look back at that as the turning point, maybe in this ball game. They had a glorious opportunity. The score was 15-11 at the time. Brian Ranson fumbled the football. Calgary recovered. They took it down and scored. And, of course, that's where we stand right now, 22-11. Montreal will return this kickoff. It's their prerogative, of course, in the second half. And if they are going to get into this game, I would suspect they are going to have to do it very early in the third quarter because Calgary's on a bit of a roll. If the Stampeders score the next touchdown to make it 29-11, to you would not like Montreal's chances of coming back. Gary Durchik, well, they've had a lot of tough luck. It's funny, I was asking Nick Araki what he thought was their downfall, and he said, strangely enough, he said a break or two all the way down the line, and they could have reversed their record. But I guess you could say that about any club. The short kickoff, once again, is taken by one of the upbacks. And Montreal, with Matt Finley carrying... Guard Dahl was down to make the tackle, and the Alouettes will take over at the 47. Brian Ransom comes back out to start this second half. You know, I really suspect if, if he doesn't get a great deal of offense moving in this third quarter, they will take a look at Walter Lewis, who is on the bench. Hasn't played in a few games, but of course, I think they'd like to once again see what he can do for their plans in 1987. Ransom came into this ball game with having thrown only six touchdown passes and had 23 interceptions. The screen pass was set up for Sean Faulkner, but he didn't make the catch, and it wasn't going to go any place anyway. Well, that's the second time they tried to screen to Faulkner, and, and the, the Calgary defense just does a super job at defending against the screen. No way, even if he caught that, he was going any place. Ransom had a moderately respectable first half, completed 11 of 19, for 199 yards and one touchdown. But the Alouettes weren't able to sustain their drive. Well, what an interesting stat there. The leading quarterback in the in the league, only 54 yards passing in that first half. Granted, he didn't have to throw the ball a great deal, but really not how you would think this game would unfold. Ransom's pass was intended for Gil Stiegel. He could not hang on because he was hit immediately by Mel Jenkins. Mel Jenkins only 5 foot 10 and 175 pounds, but he has already in this game come up and made about three good hits. This being the third one on number 85, Gil Stiegel, who had the ball, perfect throw, but look at the hit that Mel Jenkins puts on him. Leif had a chance to chat with Mel Jenkins at halftime and ask him about the Alouettes in that first half. And he said they're not showing Calgary any new wrinkles, but he was surprised at how often they threw deep in that first half. 
Richie Hull makes the catch at his 25 yard line. No yards, penalty markers come down. So the Stampeders will get a, the opportunity to move that football as they'll take over in much better field position up around their 40 yard line. Well, Dan, you know, maybe I can answer that Calgary's known as such a gambling defensive team where they do all kinds of crazy blitzes and things. And, you know, when you go into a game, that's the kind of team that you always feel like you can hit the deep one against. So maybe that was Montreal's thinking. No yards, Montreal number 29, first down. So from their own 39 yard line, the Stampeders will begin. They lead it 22 to 11. We're just underway here in quarter number three. Cut down as he got to the line of scrimmage was Tim Petrus. After a gain of maybe a yard. That sprint draw that Tim Petros ran on their very first opening drive when they took it in and scored. They had success with it, but that time Montreal read it perfectly. So make it second and nine, Stan Peters, with the ball just outside their 40. Johnson looks, throws, goes deep to Alexander, but the pass is broken up by Terry Irvin. Well, Terry Irvin's had an interesting night tonight. This is his 10th year for Jackson State. Of course, Calgary's down here for the first team he played with in the Canadian Football League. Spent some time with Saskatchewan. And of course, now over to Montreal. But he's really been tried to be physical with these receivers tonight. Watch at the end of this pass pattern. He just takes Ray Alexander and just throws him to the ground as hard as he can. And, and a few plays in the first half, he's really attacked the receivers physically. Glenn Harper's got to feel like he's playing Russian roulette every time he stands back there to punt. Six blocked in the last six games. This one very, very short. Rolls out at the Montreal 47-yard line. So the Owls will have the ball in great field position. When we return, it's a 22-11 score. Stan Peters lead the Alouettes. The Owls will have the ball when we come back. Well, there's the score, 22-11. Stan Peters lead the Montreal Alouettes. Calgary wins tonight. They clinch their first playoff berth since 1982. And if they get to the playoffs, look out every team in the Western Conference because they are capable of winning. But <laughs> the strange thing is they've had more trouble in the West than they have in the East because if they win tonight, it'll be seven out of eight against Eastern Conference teams. Sean Faulkner gets the ball over the 50 to about the 51. He'll have a pickup of about three or four yards. Bernie Morris in 72 was there to bring him down, and Bernie's another one of those guys. You seldom see him play a half-hearted game. He's always in it, gives you everything he's got, and he's been a fine player since he's been in the league. Nine years from the University of Manitoba. He's kind of like a Kevin Konar who plays for BC. You know, they always play a good game, but you don't ever really hear a heck of a lot about them. Ransom going deep. Catch was very nearly made. Good coverage by Ronnie Hawkins. Sure was. He goes up, reads it perfectly. Usually on the underthrown ball, sometimes you can get turned around and, and can't make the play, but that time he was able to get back, turned around, located the football, and did a nice, made a nice play. Working against number 80, James Hood, who tried to go up high over the top of him. Well, I'll tell you, these Montreal numbers are impossible to read. You get 88, 86, 80. They all look exactly alike. As Zen and Andrew Sisson punts this one deep to the 15-yard line. And number 27, Richie Hall, just refuses to go down. And finally is dropped by Glenn Kolka as he fought his way over the 30 to the 31. <laughs> Well, there's the lineup for Wide World of Sports tomorrow afternoon on CTV. And that international skating championship will be a dandy. Some Canadian participants include Elizabeth Manley, Mark McBean, Christine Huff, Doug Landry. Watch for it on CTV's Wide World of Sports tomorrow. Johnson's pass is complete to Tim Petrus. 
Nothing very fancy about it. Petrus just came running out of the backfield, and Johnson hit him with the pass. Good for the first down out to the 45-yard line. Well, it's good quarterbacking because he recognized the matchup instantly. He had Petros on Lamont Jeffers, and that's, of course, a desirable matchup, uh, running back against the linebacker, although Lamont Jeffers is extremely fast. Nevertheless, Petros made the catch and a nice first down reception. And gives Calgary a little bit of breathing room at the 46-yard line. Johnson's pass. Boy, that one was very nearly picked off. The Montreal defender was going to make sure that Manuel Tolbert didn't make the catch. Rick Ryan came up and made the hit on him. Maybe if he'd laid back, the ball was going to be over Tolbert's head anyway. He might have made that interception. Well, he's the club leader on Montreal with eight interceptions. And in the middle safety spot, that's the play you've got to be able to make against those inside receivers. You've got to come over when they're running in the seam there and be able to break it up. And this one is blocked. Turnabout is fair play. There are only stampeders around. It is dribbled into the end zone. And number 85, Mike Emery, and he gets the touchdown. What an alert play by Mike Emery, who utilized a rule in the CFL that you don't see in other leagues. He dribbled the ball forward, dribbled it right into the end zone, and fell on it for the major score. Well, Pat, you talked that maybe it was going to be a block punt or something of that nature that would finally decide this game. And I'm not sure which Calgary Stampede blocked it. Whoever it was, he's still down on the field. Number 71 was able to burst through there, Jake. Jay Christensen. Yeah, he's a backup slot back. Started last week, and he really took a shot in the stomach. But what an alert play, as Pat mentioned, by Mike Emery. Dribbled the ball and got a great touchdown. Well, Emery from the University of British Columbia, a fellow that we saw in the Vanier Cup a number of years ago, using his head, dribbles the ball to the end zone, and the Stampeders... <laughs> have pretty well salted this one away. Yeah, he used his head. Jay Christensen used his stomach. <laughs> Boy, he really, you could hear it all the way up here, but nevertheless, it results in a touchdown. Anything for the team. 29 to 12. Calgary over Montreal will be back with the Stampeder kickoff in a moment. This way to say well done to the Stampeders because their final home game of 1986 takes place next Friday night when the Saskatchewan Rough Riders come to town. And with the apparent victory here tonight, the Stampeders grab themselves a playoff berth for the first time since 82. The crops may be off, but we still have hay fever. Pretty good line to salute J.T. Hay, whose kickoff is handled by Jeff Treflin. And Treflin with another big return. He is the all-time Montreal Alouette single season kick returner surpassing Hal Patterson he did that last week and now he gives Montreal half decent field position at their 53 yard line with just over seven minutes left to play in the fourth quarter well, and he leads the rest of the league his closest to competitors Kevin Nealis the Winnipeg Blue Bombers he's got about a 250 yard lead over him in that title to be the top kick returner in 1986 and I'm sure he'll win that pretty easily with only a couple of games remaining with that little Utah shovel pass to Sean Faulkner and Faulkner gets it to the 51 yard line. Pat, your confidence in Mike Emery's knowledge of the CFL rules was well placed. I had a quick chat with him and he had no intention whatsoever of diving on the ball or picking it up. In fact, he has scored a touchdown just like that before when he was at UBC on a block punt. Well, as I said, Frank Smith is the head coach out there and you learn everything about football when you play for him. It's second down and about four yards to go. Branson's pass goes right through the hands of the intended receiver, Gerald Alpha. You know, we talk about looking at players for next year. These are the kind of things that the coaches remember. Although the score is 29-12, you know, you're not out of it. And you got a guy coming across the middle that could have made an easy catch and dropped the ball. They don't forget those things. Well, I'll tell you. Holding Montreal number 58, decline, third down. Ben Keeble, the offensive center, was called for holding. But you've got Norm Kimball, the president of the club, and you've got Marv Levy looking at this game, you know, assessing the talent on the field. And you're so right. I mean, they see a guy drop footballs like that, and they say, 
you know, I mean, either he improves in a hurry or we're going to have to get some. Oh, yeah. Better. And, you know, he made a couple of nice catches earlier, but you forget those things when he drops the easy one. Zen and Andrew Sishin got that putt away, but Darcy Kopp was able to field it and get it up with a 24-yard line. And now penalty marker comes down, and we may have a rough play against the Montreal Alouettes. Wait and see what the penalty marker indicates. Wait for referee Jacques to carry's call. Major foul, steering Montreal number 53, first down. That's the second steering call made by referee Jacques to, clear, to carry tonight. And number 53 is the newcomer, Will Coakley. Oh, what a time it's going to be in Vancouver in Grey Cup time. And what great programming we've got for you here on CTV. You'll see the replay, the parade, the Grey Cup game, and, of course, all the festivities that surround Grey Cup 86 in Vancouver. There's no better place to watch a Grey Cup and to be part of a Grey Cup than the city of Vancouver. The long, long pass intended for Emmanuel Tolbert just went off his fingertips. Boy, last week against the Edmonton Eskimos, it seemed like there were about three or four chances that Tolbert had deep that were just a couple of inches too long. So similar to that play right there. He was in behind David Daniels, but couldn't come up with the catch. You know, you talk about Grey Cup festivities. They're even going to have a Grey Cup golf tournament, and there's only one city you can do that in. in yeah, this that's for sure. So it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Rich Little, incidentally, is the parade marshal, and Rich will also be the top entertainment at the Grey Cup dinner, which will be held on Saturday night. Well, you know, There's that'll be a good one. The highlight of the football season in one of the beauty spots in all of Canada. Look at Johnson run. I mean, now, you've got to have a lot of respect for a guy who's the best passer in the Canadian Football League, and yet... With the game pretty well salted away, he's still willing to take off in his own. Picks up 27 yards on a jump that takes him into the Montreal 44-yard line. Well, you know, he doesn't like to really do it too often because coming into this game, really, he's only he had 116 total yards rushing coming into this game at 17 games. That's not a heck of a lot of yards, but he's doing anything he can to keep the offense moving. Well, you know that they're going to be just delighted. All the hard work that the entire organization has put into building this club, but it looked like it might be folding, and what a reward for the fans, too. And what an adjustment to the football, but he wasn't able to make the reception by Ray Alexander. Well, you know, my hat is off to the, all the fans at Calgary. Really, the support that they've generated for their team has just been heartwarming throughout the league, and I hope they have a good turnout for their final home uh, regular season game this week against Saskatchewan. And it's rewarding that their club was able to be as competitive as it was and to grab a playoff spot. Ooh, we're talking big success story right here with this group. And they got good character on that club too. Some good young guys, guys like Harold Hallman and, and uh, players like that. Vince Goldsmith has been around. He lent some leadership to that. Their secondary is extremely solid, so they've got a good team of the future too. Gary Allen takes that little swing pass coming out of the backfield, gets to the 35-yard line, which will leave him about a yard short of the first down with just over four minutes left to play in the ball game. So on third down, what are the Stampeders going to do? They're going to go for the first down. It's a full yard to go on third down. you are just joining us. The Calgary Stampeders lead it 29 to 12 under this man, Bob Vespasiani. And they are just moments away from clinching the final playoff spot in the Western Conference. <laughs> Gary Allen dives his way for lots inside the 30 to the 28 yard line. Allen at this moment has rushed for 122 yards on 16 carries. Also caught three passes for 21. And he comes up limping, which is not good news for the Calgary Stampeders. He spent three years with the Dallas Cowboys. He's primarily a kick returner. His release came to Calgary, and what a weapon he's been for them. Ryan Dudley was also shaken up on the play number 15 for Montreal. So you've got Allen down on one knee and Dudley back on his back. 
Looks like Gary Allen had a little problem with the Achilles uh, tendon down the, in the heel area. Well, there's no disgrace in not being able to crack the lineup of the Dallas Cowboys when you consider that Tony Dorsett was the man who beat him out of a job at the running back position. And Brian Dudley has come in to Montreal this year and played well, too. Let's see if we can see what happens. Allen over top of the pile. And so you see Brian Dudley in there. Well, he's down in the lower right hand of your screen, and he was enforcing the play. Couldn't see how he got injured. Tell you, the fellow who's impressed me tonight in his initial appearance on behalf of the Alouettes is Rayford Cooks, number 69, the defensive tackle. Uh, who actually made the stop on Gary Allen on that play. Pat Clayton walking Allen off the field. Well, Rayford Cooks is a guy who Gary Durchick described as not overly big, but extremely good quickness. Well, he's not that small, 2'6'3", 249. Johnson fires, and it was tipped away by Terry Irvin. The pass was intended for Emmanuel Tolbert. And Irvin, who really has played a very strong game for the Owls, was there to knock it away. 314 left to play in the fourth quarter. That's great anticipation. That's not his man. He's in his own coverage. He just sloughs off and comes over and makes the play on Tolbert up the seam. You know, that's 10 years in the league. That's experience. You know, you can just read it and feel it. So it brings up a second and 10 for the Stampeders at the Montreal 28. Pass is complete to Allen, who's back in the ball game. Boy, he takes some heavy hits as he gets inside the 20 to about the 19 or 18-yard line. Now, the placement of the ball will be all important here as Terry Irvin and Will Coakley were there to make the stop on him. So with under three minutes left to play, it is Calgary 29, Montreal 12, and we'll be back for the final three minutes in a moment. We've got two minutes, 50 seconds left to play in the ball game. It's a 29-12 score in favor of Calgary as Terry Irvin, who has really played well for the Alouettes tonight, was shaken up on that last play. He's helped off the field. And now on third and less than a yard to go with the ball spotted at the 19-yard line, the Stampeders will go for it. Now in a couple of similar situations, they've given the ball to Gary Allen. And they do so again. As Allen picks his way inside the 15, down to about the 17-yard line, or down to about the 13-yard line. Helping out on the tackle for Montreal was Rick Ryan. Dan Peters has done an excellent job tonight in that short yardage offense, and I think a lot of the credit has to go to number 12, Tim Petros from the University of Calgary Dinosaurs. He has done just a super job leading Gary Allen up through the holes. And don't forget, it's the Calgary Dinosaurs and the Alberta Golden Bears. Tomorrow at McMahon Stadium at 1.30, the North-South Shrine Game. And sacked and down goes Rick Johnson. Brett Williams, 71, one of the fe people in there, and so too was the middle linebacker, Will Coakley, number 53. Now, uh, when they're backed up, they decided they were going to come with everybody, and there you see 53, Will Coakley, who's getting a chance to play in that middle linebacking spot. He, he got off to a rough start tonight, that first drive by the Stan Peters, but really has settled down in there. But again, an excellent opportunity for the Montreal hierarchy to see if he can be the man to play that spot. I don't know how they'll grade him out tonight. He hasn't been wildly impressive, but we'll wait and see. Well, don't forget they've got a guy named Paul Gray who really is their starting middle linebacker. He's been out with an knee injury all year, and hopefully he'll be ready for them next year. This is Emmanuel Tolbert. And Tolbert is chased out by Steve Benjamin, who did a good job and showed you that he has pretty good speed. He just wouldn't allow Tolbert to turn the corner and break it upfield. Well, Steve Benjamin's a rookie from Cal State who really has played well for the Alouettes this year. He's got a couple of interceptions, but really been a steady performer on that corner. Ray Alexander beat him for a touchdown tonight, but, I mean, it was just a super pass pattern and, and is equally a good a throw. You can't really fault the defensive back on that. And with 140 left to play in the ball game, J.T. Hay and the field goal unit comes out onto the field. Oh, 
Nice kick is good. And it's just icing on the cake for the Calgary Stampeders who are on their way to the playoffs. And boy, when you consider they've got the top rusher in the league, the top passer in the league, the top scorer in the league, and J.T. Hay, you've got the feel that they will give anybody they play in those playoffs all they can handle. Oh, it's going to be a great playoff race out there. And all four teams are capable of beating each other on any given day. You know the nice thing about the Calgary Stampeders tonight, they 32 to 12, you know, they're, gonna, they're winning by 20 points, but they, they just haven't beaten themselves. They haven't made any errors to give a game away and made the key plays when they've had to. Fell behind and came right back to take the lead. Have had very few penalties. Walter Lewis is back in a quarterback from up the aisle. That pass was intended for Gerald Alford, but it goes incomplete. Well, that's what I talked about the Calgary secondary earlier. They're, they're a group of guys that have been in the same group now for three and four years, respectively. Larry Hogue, who made the play there, he's been around for four years. Originally drafted by the Cincinnati Bengals, was released, came with the Stampeders. They're all small guys, 5'9", 5'10", but they've been around. They know what each other's going to do back there, and they're a solid group. So from the shotgun, Walter Lewis will direct his alouettes from their own 35-yard line. Fires, and that one was just about picked up. And had it been so, it would have been end zone territory for Ronnie Hopkins, number 15. Well, you saw the standings on the screen, and we have inserted that the Calgary Stampeders have won the game tonight. They have 20 points that have moved ahead of the BC Lions. Boy, Ronnie Hopkins read that play well. He's played well tonight. You know, he just watched the eyes of Walter Lewis all the way and then would let the ball go, broke on it, and could have maybe had an interception. Nevertheless, he knocked the ball down. So it's 20 points for the Stampeders and a 20-point lead here in the waning seconds of this football game. 32-12, to 12, Calgary over Montreal, a Zen and Andrew Sisson who had a block punt. And it was dribbled down the field by Mike Emery into the end zone for a Calgary touchdown here in this fourth quarter. Look at Darcy Cop. Cop just fighting for everything he can get. The game is won, but he's going to still give you everything. And that's what you notice about the Stampeders. I mean, they don't let up in any facet of their game. Well, the nice thing is they're getting some depth on that uh, ball club, and that's what you have to have when the injuries occur as they did tonight Richie Hall had to go out Darcy Cop came in and he played well now he's returning a punt and they've got some good backup guys they've got a guy like Kent Warnick that's on the injured reserve list now he's the number one draft choice this year he's going to be a good player in their future got a guy like Mike Emery comes up with a big big play for them tonight another backup linebacker so Leafs point is really well made. They are really rounding into us. I mean, that's why Edmonton has been so successful over the years. Well, at BC as well. You can see the mold being created by the Stan Peters as well. Well, the Alouettes are still hitting because they put a pretty good lick on Tim Petros. As Petros got inside Montreal territory at about the 48-yard line to pick up seven yards. <laughs> the old toaster, Brett Williams, is walking around in the Calgary backfield. He's not quite sure which side of the ball he's supposed to be. Brett Williams has really played well for Montreal this year, though. And I would think that he'll be their Shenley candidate. Well, it's the top defense. Oh, player. The, if he's not, call the cops because he's the best player they've had by far. And a great guy, too. We've had the opportunity to chat with him in a few of our trips to Montreal. And he's a super guy, loves the CFL, is going to make his home in Montreal in the offseason, which I think is great. Originally with a Memphis showboat to the United States Football League. Hasn't been able to get in on too many short yardage situations uh, offensively this year. He hurt the ankle and they just wanted to give him a little rest in that department. The minute flag has just gone up. As Glenn Harper comes out onto the field to punt it away for the Stampeders. Rafflin takes it at a 16. And he, you know what he reminds me of? A string of spaghetti. He gets hit and he wobbles and he bounces and he just never goes off his feet and you end up, he's got six more yards than you would have originally anticipated. Well, when you're 5'8 and 170 pounds, you have to have a lot of heart and he sure does. The 
clock has been out all of the second half here in Montreal and much of the second quarter as well. Sean Faulkner, number 36, is the injured Montreal Alouette. Well, you know, we talk about a good nucleus, and certainly the Calgary Stampeders have that. I think the Montreal Alouettes, give or take a few players, have a pretty good nucleus going into next season. And I, there's a few guys, and Sean Faulkner would be at the top of the list of the new fellas they've had come in in the last month that has played well. Well, I think what you'll find is Montreal will go to training camp next year, and they will have the people there that they want on their football team and I'll be very surprised if you see them shuffling players in and out next year. Well it'll be the same old story though if they can get the quarterback from Ransom or, or Walter Lewis I don't know if one of those two guys will be the one that does it but that's the secret. Yeah. If you don't have the trigger man it's kind of tough. 44 seconds left to play in the ball game. And again a reminder that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will be the Stampeders Final visitors to McMahon, and that takes place next Friday at 7.30 Calgary time. Saskatchewan hosting BC this weekend. Mm -hmm. This pass is caught by Jacques Chapdelaine, and he gets the first down to the 43-yard line. Hopkins on the king and the captain. The Alouette's not laying down and dying. I mean, they have no shot at winning the football game, trailing by 20 points. There's a great picture of Rick Johnson. Good-looking guy, isn't Yeah, he? he's a terrific-looking yeah. guy. Yeah, and a nice fellow, too. I had a chance to chat with him in Toronto. And he was a very personable young man. He Now, he is really a terrific addition to the league, not only to the Stampeders, but to the entire league. Walter Lewis trying to get some points before they fire the gun, but not to be, I don't think. Mel Jenkins, who's played a pretty good game himself on defense, had a good shot of making the interception. He really has played well tonight. Third year out of the University of Cincinnati with six interceptions on a season. Well, you've got to figure everybody's played pretty well. Montreal only has 12 points. Sure have. Look at Greg Peterson, the starting safety for the Stampeders. So on second and ten and just seconds left in the ball game, the Alouettes trying to get down to see if they can grab another touchdown. But it has been tough sledding tonight for them. Well, again, Jacques Chapdelaine makes the catch. But the dance didn't work this time because he comes up a couple of yards short. I always like that, that those dance steps when you're going nowhere. I mean, it's, you don't feel a whole lot of folks when you're doing that. So it's third and just a little more than a yard. And of course, the Alouettes will go for it. Penalty marker is down as Chapelin makes another reception. He would have the first down. <laughs> But holding is the call against Montreal. And all this comes with 15 seconds left to play in the ball game. Montreal has had 12 penalties tonight for 130 yards. Calgary's had only four for 20. It's an amazing discrepancy. Jacques the carry says to Montreal get back. I still haven't had my air time. <laughs> they got holding Montreal number 66, third down. That's Lloyd Fairbanks, their left offensive tackle, who performed for so many years with these Calgary Stampeders. So it's third down and 11 now. And Walter Lewis has the ball knocked right out of his hands by number 77, James Walker. So with just seven seconds left to play in the ball game, the Calgary Stampeders have got to be elated. And you can see the 
smile on Rick Johnson's face. It's not been a big night for Rick Johnson as a passing quarterback, but he's directed a very sharp-looking offense. Well, they haven't made any mistakes. You know, I, he hasn't thrown an interception tonight. Uh, they played, they played error-free football, and of course, that's what the championship teams do. Touchdown for the Stampeders in the second half came off a blocked Zeman Andrews session punt that Mike Emery dribbled into the end zone. Listen, let's face it, this has been a tough place for Western clubs to win in this year, so Calgary will be delighted with this win. Get out of town, you've got two points, you're in, in third place all by yourself for the time being, so they have to be delighted. This will be the final play of the game. Rick Johnson goes down on one knee. And the Calgary Stampeders under that man, Rob Desrazian, got themselves a playoff spot with a 32-12 victory.